Hello and welcome to our Sustaining Healthy Relationships podcasts. In March 2022, Relate NA commissioned Ulster University to carry out evidence-based research on healthy relationships and their importance across our lifespans. These podcasts delve a little deeper into our findings and we bring them to life with experts unpacking particular findings. Enjoy. Siobhan Kearney, it is an absolute pleasure to be having you as a guest on our podcast. Would you like to tell us a wee bit about your work with Menopause NA? Certainly, and thank you so much for having me, of course. So I have been working in the area of menopause now for about five years. And Kelly, I have to tell you, when I started to design and develop programs and workshops around menopause about five, six years ago, tumbleweed, Mm -hmm. right? But I persisted because it was important to me as a perimenopausal woman at that stage, not knowing what was happening to me, to then build my knowledge um, and then start to develop programs to bring awareness to other women who maybe were experiencing menopause and didn't know. That was my whole rationale for doing what I do. Then I started to get really busy. I got my programs clinically governed. So those are high quality, accurate, evidence-based programs. And I was getting so busy and so many demands in my time, I thought I need somewhere to house all of this work. So that led me to setting up Menopause NI as a community of interest company. And the good news is it is incredibly busy and the awareness of the menopause and the demand for the services that I provide is growing day in and day out. I remember, Siobhan, so um, when I was growing up, it was called uh, The Change. I'll just use inverted commas there for anybody on the podcast. Um, and that could that, that covered a multitude of things. But I remember when I had 45 and started to suffer from severe anxiety, never suffered from anxiety in my life. Mm-hmm. My mother suffered from anxiety. I was like, there's no such thing, just pull yourself together. <sighs> um, to the point where you're lying in bed, pulling the clothes out over your head, going, I really don't want to get up today. Uh, sweats, mm. um, always was very sharp losing focus mm-hmm. um, and just losing yourself the whole impact on the relationship with yourself you don't know who you are anymore and it was making I was going through stages of, of grieving and anger going I'm a 45 year old woman I should be at the pinnacle of my career I have so much experience under my belt my kids are kind of well up my relationships are going well why do I feel like this mm-hmm. Um and it, that's that's when my awareness around the menopause happened. So it was four or five years ago as mm-hmm. well. And there's so much information now, but so many different symptoms. So it's very, it, it's you nearly need a kind of tailor-made solution for each and every woman. Would you, is, is that what you think? It is totally an individual experience for every woman. And I remember having conversations with friends who were older than me, and they were like shrug of the shoulders, like, I didn't even notice. And I'm like, rage. The rage was probably a symptom of the menopause as well, as you say. <laughs> but for any woman who is wants to find out more about her own health, her own physical health, her own mental health, to understand this transition, my advice is to do your research, to understand it, to be aware of what the symptoms are. Because there's a lot of women out there that I talk to who maybe have the likes of fibromyalgia, so the fatigue that comes with menopause, the, the, you know, the aching joints and pains, can look very, very much like fibromyalgia. So therefore, it's about being aware of the 40 plus symptoms of the menopause um, and not self-identifying, of course, that's me, that's me, that's me, but being aware of how this can have an impact on us, an impact on our physical health, an impact on our mental health and a real change in our emotional health as well. And when you were talking about that like loss of identity, it was like, who am I in the middle of all of this? And looking over your shoulder and going, where did the real Siobhan go? Mm-hmm. And then as I have emerged through to now being a proud postmenopausal woman, the only reason I look back over my shoulder is to say, well done, look at how far you have come. Mm-hmm. I am not the same woman, but I am a more vibrant, more confident woman. And the reason I'm more confident is I managed my symptoms the best way that I could using information, um, not being sucked into this marketing that goes on now around the menopause and menopause washing and all of that, actually taking care of my physical health and mental health um, and celebrating the fact that I have got to this stage. And I am at the top of my professional game. Women like us are definitely at the top of our professional game. The menopause should not be a barrier to us thriving, both in our home life 
and indeed at work. Um, <clears throat> from your experience, Siobhan, and which of which you have loads, um, what impact does menopause have on the relationship? I suppose we've touched on the relationship with ourselves, that lack mm-hmm. of or the the lack of or the, the our loss of identity. Um, and I'm I'm starting to feel that as well. And, and I didn't realise it was a kind of curve that you can actually feel that you're coming out the other end mm. and you've gone through this season and I am gaining my confidence and stuff back as well. But what impact does that have on our relationships with others? So, you know, our romantic relationships, our relationships with our children, our relationship with our work colleagues. What kind of impact does it have on relationships? Well, when I reflect on my own experience of the menopause, all I wanted to do was isolate myself. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I live on my own. My partner lives in Belfast. Um, when he was coming down for the weekend, you know, I was like, oh, my goodness, please, Hansel and Gretel, don't come into my house and leave a... a you know crumbs lying all over the place um, and that sense of frustration and it had an impact on how I felt about myself and I have no doubt that it had an impact on how my partner felt about our relationship. I'm sure his feelings about me didn't change because I am of course the most wonderful woman in the world (laughs) Um, but how I felt about myself at that time had a real impact on me. That loss of confidence, changes to body shape, putting on weight, not knowing what was happening to me, uh, changes to my skin, to muscle mass, to muscle tone, all of these changes were changes happening. Changes to sex drive. <coughs> changes to sex yeah. drive, of course, very, very common when it comes to our menopausal transition. And not knowing myself anymore, feeling really self-conscious. Um, and of course, that had an impact on how I felt about myself. Absolutely, it did. It had also an impact on how I felt, I felt about my relationship with my partner. When it came to other relationships with, like, my friends, I didn't really, I couldn't be bothered. I didn't have the motivation to do anything. And then I had to catch myself on and say, Siobhan, if you continue like this and people ring you and say, are you going out? Do you want to go out? Do you want to do something? You keep saying no, 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 because maybe it just wasn't feeling up to it. You're going to lose your friends. And they're so incredibly important at this stage in our lives. And funny, I was doing a workshop earlier on talking about menopause and the impact that it has on our relationships using some of the wonderful resources and and sharing them with others because I think that's really important for us to have a deeper understanding of how this can impact our as you say romantic relationships and our personal relationships and you know the (laughs) the internal rage that I had sometimes I call it internal because I didn't want to be exploding either in a professional capacity or indeed at home But that sense of like, why did somebody put the fire on? I'm having massive hot flushes. (laughs) The oven's on. I have my hands in like hot soapy water. And me going around opening windows in the house and somebody else coming along behind me and closing them. (laughs) It was like, seriously, I am leaving. You know, I just wanted to get out of there. Because by nature, I'm calm, normal person. Enjoy a bit of their crack. I would say you're quite laid back. back. Yeah. Nothing really bothers me that much. And then suddenly everything bothered me. And I just had to be really mindful and careful um, of the relationships I had with my family, the relationships that I had with Noel, the professional relationships that I had, um, and making big life choices, of course, when I was perimenopausal, like leaving a full-time job as a chief executive to set up my own business. And the confidence that, sorry, the lack of confidence that I had at that time, I was sitting some days wondering, why did you do this? So it's about maintaining and sustaining those relationships, having those conversations, building that understanding. Because, Kel, you and I have spoke about this before. Women are now only themselves recognising that this is the menopause and talking to their friends about it. It's time for us to widen that conversation and talk to our partners to help them to understand. Uh, Sometimes that can feel quite difficult and quite challenging, but that open communication is so, so incredibly important. And taking guidance from the likes of Relating, all those resources that you have online. Like, seriously, that's a real route map to support people uh, in their relationships at this stage in their lives. And I think that's important, but also, you know that we talked about that, like the loss of identity and where, where we're at. The relationship with ourselves, I think, is fundamental. Mm-hmm. You know, building that relationship with ourselves, doing the self-care, looking after yourself. You know, we spend our lives looking after everybody else and we become bottom of the list or last of the list. You know, is it eating healthy? Is it um, taking exercise? Whatever it is that that is that helps your symptoms or makes you feel good. But when you're not in that headspace mm. to kind of look after yourself, you're, you're running on empty. You know, it's like trying to drive a car up to Limavati and the petrol tank's empty. You're quite yeah. right. And I suppose when I 
consider the work that I do in the menopause, right? It is about raising awareness of the symptoms and the impact that the menopause can have, but also to talk about lifestyle choices that we have, whether we feel like eating healthily or not, is, it has got to be a choice. Whether we feel like sitting down instead of going out for a walk, that is a choice. Motivation at this stage is really, really challenging, Kelly. I know it myself. I mean, I sat for, after I left my job, I sat down. I mean, I didn't sit all the time, right? But I always say I sat for a year Mm -hmm. and went went to put a pair of trousers on that I wore at work and they wouldn't fit me. Mm -hmm. And here I am beating myself up. What? Oh my God, you're useless. You did this. You didn't do that. Beating myself up. Negative automatic thinking. Inner critic was taken over. Mm -hmm. But you know what? This is my life. This is my health. This is my choice. So what is it that I can do proactively to support my body and my mental health as I transition through the menopause? So lifestyle, what do you put in your mouth? Whether it's food, alcohol consumption, what do you do with this body that you have? How are you taking care of it? Are you sitting doing nothing, watching TV all the time? Or are you being proactive in your own health? I'm a great advocate for that because I'm now 52 Sorry, I thought you were going to say you don't look 52. But anyway, <laughs> we're just going to have to get over that one. I'm 52 years of age. <laughs> You're a very handsome woman, Siobhan Gurney. I told you many times. A handsome woman. <laughs> when I'm 62, I want to be healthy. When I'm 72, I still want to be mobile and moving about. So thinking about the exercise for my cardiovascular health, for muscle mass, bone density, all of those protective things that I can do for myself now. And also, actually makes me feel good. Yeah. Makes me feel good. Yeah. That's not to say that I wouldn't maybe, perhaps, who knows, have a wee gin tonight. I <laughs> wouldn't two. promise it. Or, no, 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 no. Just not the two, one, just, just the one. The one. Yeah. Uh-huh. So again, it's about understanding this transition, managing this transition for ourselves. There's no magic wand out there that somebody else can apply to you at this stage in your life. Just being consciously aware that you want to do the best for yourself. And I was, I think, I can't remember who it was, um, I was listening to a podcast or something and uh, somebody said, choose your heart. So just as you said, so it's hard to sit in the sofa and go, I feel overweight, I feel demotivated, I'm just going to sit here and watch TV. That's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get up to go go to the gym or go for a walk or eat a healthy, so you get to choose your heart. Everything's hard. Oh, yeah. Everything's hard going through the menopause, but you get to choose what the heart is. I love it. Yeah, and I have to say, I started going to the gym, you and I had a conversation before mm-hmm. Christmas, I said, Siobhan... I've got to just grab the bull by the horns. I have no, I just, I'm feeling really lethargic. And my, my body doesn't feel like my own. I started the gym in January and I haven't looked behind my touch wood. Um, feel completely different about myself, my motivation. Mm-hmm. Now, who likes getting up at half six in the morning and pulling their gym gear on and going to the gym? But I've chosen my heart ah, because brilliant. It, that's easier than sitting feeling sorry for myself. Oh going, my goodness. What's happening to my body? I don't know what's going on. I know. On. Yeah. And I remember having this conversation with myself as well saying, Oh my God, my body is letting me down at this stage in my life. And then it was like, well, in actual fact, it's you that's letting your body down because you're not moving enough, you're eating processed food, you're not taking care of yourself, you're getting yourself sunk down into like low mood or no mood. Um, So make a choice. So which is the path that I want to take? And I do remember a woman that I was talking to. It was about something totally different. Um, And she said, Siobhan, when I approach difficult times of the year, for example, I always think, right, okay, what sort of Christmas do I want to remember? What sort of whatever do I want to remember? And that really struck me. And I thought, well, what sort of menopause experience do I want to remember? And that changed everything. Because I want to feel proud of myself for getting up and going, for doing what I can, for maintaining my professional life, my family life, which is so incredibly important to me, and striking a balance, but looking after myself as number one. Because well, if you don't look after yourself, you can't do any of those other things. And I say this in workshops all the time. Why do you think when they get on a plane, they say, please fit your own oxygen mask first before mm-hmm. you try anybody else? So if we don't look after ourselves, we cannot fulfill any of those other things. No. That are going on. And you know, Kelly, at this stage in our lives, life's busy. Life's busy. And you were talking earlier about those feelings that you had around, you know, the being perimenopausal and, you know, being tired and that loss of confidence. Uh, The menopause doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens when life is really, really busy with our work, uh, the work that we do, 
the family that we have, the responsibilities that we have. So when the menopause happens, we are already super busy and possibly quite stressed out. Then the menopause starts. The transition can be really, really tricky for a lot of women. So it's about how we manage all of that, right? And find ways to make ourselves feel good, to do the things that we enjoy. I mean, I took up uh, kayaking at the grand old age of 47. Wow, what a great experience out on the River Ban at Port Glenowan every week. Good for my mental health, good for my physical health. A bit of chat going up and down the river. All the problems that I had before I got onto that, we sit on top kayak, were gone by the time I got back. So again, it's about not, you know, sinking into that like, oh my goodness, this is awful. Yeah. This is so bad. I know a lot of women have very, very difficult experiences and I am not diminishing that Absolutely. by any stretch of the imagination. But for those women who feel that there are proactive steps that they can take, my advice is take them. You'll not look back and regret taking them. You'll look back and regret doing no, nothing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But are we not really nearly, I think we are, the first generation of women who are recognising that there's symptoms but also wanting that life after menopause, if you know what I mean. It's, you know, you were basically shoved on the scrap heap once you had the menopause because you were not fertile or you couldn't produce kids mm. anymore. But we're the first generation going, actually, this is really difficult. We'll try and manage it the best we can. And I'm the same as you. I do not, by any stretch of the imagination, diminish what women go through. Of course. But I can sit and think about those things or I can try and do something, be it take myself for a walk around the park. You know, I'm not talking know, about climbing Kilimanjaro. I know, I know. It's the tiny, it's the small steps. It's one foot in front of the other oh. when it's the most difficult thing to do. Absolutely. And it's all incremental. Yeah. So every tiny step that any of us take to maintain good physical and mental health, will you'll reap the benefits of it. And you're right, you know what, when I think about, you know, this transition, and women do feel quite differently about it. You were saying about, you know, that loss of fertility and sense of, you know, I, who am I now? Um, and other women like me are like, bring it on. Yeah. I can't wait. Embrace, embrace, embrace. Because I have a long life ahead of me. Yeah. And I am not going to look at my life as if it's over because I no longer can produce children. It's like, right, okay, what next? Yeah. What next? That, that part of your life is over. Funny, I did some yoga for menopause classes mm. um, with a wonderful woman called Lisa Copeland a couple of months back and she talks about the seasons of menopause and she said, we're just going, this is our spring. This is our new spring. And oh, I thought it was brilliant. beautiful. And I have to say, it was the first time that I actually had thought positively about menopause. So you're doing yoga, you're mm. talking about nutrition, you're talking about science, you're talking about emotions, you're doing, you know, you're doing physical activity as well. But the, the, the analogy of us working through our seasons and entering the spring of our middle age, if you like, wow. was just absolutely wonderful. So I know. Um, yeah, she's a, she's a great woman, but I think we are the first generation that it's basically, life isn't over. <laughs> life <laughs> is by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, I have conversations with my mother and my mother's 83 coming 84. Sorry, mommy. Um, <laughs> 83 coming 84. And I, I started to talk to her about the menopause and her experience of menopause and, you know, HRT and all of this stuff. And of course, you, what you said at the very outset, the change. Right, the M word was not even mentioned. It was like in hidden corners and hidden rooms, uh, down long lanes. <laughs> women, <laughs> <laughs> women were talking to their friends about the change. Um, and I, I look now, and it's not that long ago, like thirty years ago, Mummy would have been menopausal. Um, and I think to myself, isn't it great now that here we are sitting today, talking openly about the menopause? And engaging in conversations and encouraging women to, you know, talk about their experiences. Because what I find with anything that is stigmatized or has a taboo around it, what I find is when people aren't talking about it, that's when the real damage is done. So we're I talking. I, yeah, I would say you're probably like me. But so I'll meet somebody who I haven't seen in two or three years. Well, how are you getting on? Not too bad, you know, I'm in the throes of the menopause. They stop you there mm. and then go, menopause? And the door is open and they will give you the list and litany of what the things that they've gone through or what's uh, happened to their friend. Or yes. Their, and, but it's wonderful. And it's, I find, an, it, it, maybe it's an age thing as well, a real bonding, a real sisterhood. That's kinda, right. You're going through it too. Well, uh -huh. we didn't hear what happened to me. You uh -huh. know, and it's that empathy that we share with each other as of well. Of course. Yeah. And there's nothing, I have to tell you, nothing as powerful as groups of women. Like, I mean, I was with a group of women this morning 
and talking openly about the menopause and that sense of they're like wrapping their arms around others because we do need support at this stage. There's no denying it. Um, And just to know that there are other women out there who have either been through a similar experience or a different experience, have come out the other side or at the beginning of their journey, but knowing that you are not alone. Very powerful thing. And I think it is, when I did those yoga for men pause classes, there were women who were at the beginning of their journey, middle of their journey, end of their journey, but... We all knew that we were on. We knew it was a journey, and uh-huh. then we knew that we weren't alone. And it was, it was there was a real feeling of sisterhood around that. You mentioned HRT, mm-hmm. and I look at some of the uh, Facebook support groups for menopause. I mean, women are flat in the mat posting stuff about what's going on. But I'd read one the other day, and I thought it was really interesting. So a woman rocked up to her doctor, said, "Look, I'm such and so age. Here are my symptoms. I think I need HRT." And the doctor turned around and said to her, "Oh, Davina has just made that thing popular. You've no need for HRT." Siobhan, what advice would you give to some some woman who rocked up to her doctor, and that's what the doctor said? Yeah, no, well, without physical violence. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? With the right knowledge and information, and advocating for yourself, honestly, I would not tolerate that for one minute. Because what we choose to do for ourselves with our bodies in terms of making a choice whether to take HRT or not should be accepted and should be respected. Davina McCall, I think, has done a wonderful job in shining a light on a very taboo subject. It shouldn't be used against women now and they shouldn't be told that you don't need it. That's a great assumption. How does anybody know what that woman's experiencing? At least she knew what her symptoms were. She was prepared to go to her GP and to get a knockback like that, I would certainly be going back either to the same GP and advocating even more strongly for myself. And if it's a choice that you're making as an individual woman, you know, this is the treatment for the menopause. Are you denying me medical treatment? Yeah, but I mean, the, the GP didn't even ask, you know, for a blood test or any. It just, it was like, oh, this is the new fad thing. And uh-huh. just for anybody listening out there who hasn't seen Bridget Christie's The Change on Channel 4, mm-hmm. did you watch the, mm-hmm. the series? It is an absolute, it made me laugh, it made me cry. Um, but Bridget Christie obviously has taken her menopausal experience and put it into and, and written it up as, as an experience. I just thought it was absolutely wonderful. So just wanted to name drop, uh-huh. not only Davina, but Bridget, but Bridget Christie's uh-huh. The Change as well. Um Okay, last question, Siobhan. If you had a menopause magic wand, I'm giving you a menopause magic wand, what would your three wishes be in terms of women and the menopause? That women's health would be researched much better. That women would have access, universal access to support and treatment and specialist treatment if they need it. And that the taboo and stigma surrounding the menopause would be so last year and so out of date that we could have conversations in our workplaces, in our homes without that fear and shame associated with what is a very, very natural thing for a woman to go through. Thank you, Siobhan. My pleasure. So thanks to my guest, Siobhan Kearney. For further information on relationship support, briefing papers and other podcasts, check out relateni.org. You can also listen to these podcasts from your regular platforms.